Hey everyone, today I'd like to talk about the topic of organizing our notes. So how do you organize your notes? There is lots of opinion out there about this topic. Just a couple of examples here. So as I started to rethink my PKM processes, of course, I started to think about organizing my notes and sharing my thoughts about it. A couple of years ago, I read this article by Matt McGann, and he talks about the daily note first and the content first approach. Eleanor recently had this tweet where she talks about how the daily note page doesn't quite fit her needs and her workflow. So there's plenty of opinion out there about this topic. And I think that at a fundamental level, we are all cooking from the same ingredients. We're just using different recipes that will result in different meals. Our ingredients are the tags that we use, the folders we create, the block references, the insert, the headings, the text, the pages, the links, the tasks, the sketches. These are the basic building blocks, the basic ingredients of any note-taking system. I also believe that note-taking is a very personal matter. But it's also true that we first make our tools and then our tools start to shape us. And I think the question is not only who you are and what tools and process would fit your needs, but maybe even more importantly, who you want to become. Because we first make our habits and then our habits make us. But to find the starting point in terms of understanding who you are and what your needs might be, there are some classification systems that you might want to look at. So, for example, Tiago Forte has this classification of the architect, the gardener, the librarian and the student, where the architect is one who enjoys planning, designing and creating their own processes. A gardener enjoys more exploring their thoughts and creating connections between ideas. A librarian is more of a collector who likes to create catalogs. And the student doesn't yet have a strong preference. They're developing their understanding of personal knowledge management. Nick Milo talks about the writer, the collector, the connector, the databaser. But with both of these models, I think what you need to remember is that our personalities evolve over time. And what I find over the last 30 plus years that I've been taking notes, my method, my process, my preferences have changed every couple of years. Every five years, I was tweaking on how I take notes and tweaking how I think about notes. The topic I want to explore in detail is the different ways you can organize your notes. My objective here is to help you think and reflect on which way you organize your notes and why. And I think it's important to say that none of these are better or worse. They're just different. In some cases, you will use one approach. In another case, you will use another approach. But let's look at these five approaches. So the first approach I have here, I call the random mess. A friend of mine comes to mind. She has all her notes on post-it notes. And you can find post-it notes in her books, in her purse, on her desk. These are everywhere. And when she needs to find something, she looks through these post-it notes and miraculously she's able to find information, phone numbers or meeting notes or whatever. But to me, it looks like the real archetype of random mess. To look at my own situation, my mailbox is a random mess. I don't use folders. I don't really use tags. What I do is I add keywords to emails and keywords are really just a brain dump of couple of words that come to mind that I add to each of my email. And based on that, I use search and I hope for the best. I usually find the emails that I need, but that is my organization for emails. The next approach is the daily notes first approach. If we look at recent systems, Rome Research is a strong 
advocate of this approach. If you open ROM research, you are greeted with a daily notes page. So it encourages you with an empty page to start to take notes on that day. And the daily notes approach, the idea is you keep your notes on the daily notes page. You sometimes branch out from the daily notes page, but the daily notes are the backbone of your note taking system. For many years, I was using a daily notes first approach also in the brain app. And then later on, when I moved over to Rome, I was continuing to use this daily notes first approach. And I find it a very powerful and good way. And that is because I tend to remember chronology so I can better remember when something happened or also where something happened than the event itself. So I tend to find information based on these location or time pointers. The content first approach or atomic notes. This was the first best practice that I was offered when I moved over to Obsidian that I should be taking atomic notes because that is how Obsidian is most efficient. You create atomic pages, you create a page for every topic, for every note that you take. If I'm in a sequence of meetings with someone, so let's say I have a weekly connect with someone, then each time I create a separate note for the conversation we had. You could create a new page for something that you are doing on a project that you're working on or a note on a book that you're reading, a note on a meeting, on a hobby, when you're planning a holiday. The basic idea is you have all these notes on different topics and they are relatively small notes. And your key navigation between these notes are the links that you create. You can still have a daily notes page. So that's what I'm representing here with the red bubbles, but that is not the core of your system. The core is these individual notes that you're taking. Some of them are linked to your daily page, but the important thing is to have these connection between notes and that's how you navigate this. Similar to the content first approach is what I call the topic first approach. These bigger bubbles represent maps of content or maybe index pages, your 12 favorite problems. They can even be topical quick capture pages. So for each of your research topics or areas of interest, you create a separate quick capture page and anything that comes in, you add to that page and then you create notes around that. Again, you can still have your daily notes page and you might be linking to your daily notes page, but these maps of content, these index pages form the starting point for your knowledge management system. And a special case of this approach is the Zettelkasten system or the Slipbox system, which is a popular method of creating research notes on a given topic. And these research notes are called permanent notes. And what this graph symbolizes is you have some research topics that you're interested in and your permanent notes build on one another. You're advancing your research in that field. And as you find new information, as you reflect on information that you've collected, you create new and new permanent notes that link to previous permanent notes in this chain like manner as you explore the topic. These dotted lines represent cross references or lateral links between permanent notes in different parts of your Zettelkasten system. You can marry actually the Zettelkasten system with either a daily notes first system or a topic first system or an atomic content first system. The way it works is some of your notes become permanent notes. So what this chart tries to represent is this is your Zettelkasten. And if you are following a daily notes first approach, then some of the notes that you create on your daily notes page, you might tag 
as a permanent node and link it into your Zettel custom system. These two bubbles are actually the same. I just separated to show that the origin of those notes comes from your daily notes first system, but then there's a different view on it, which is your Zettel custom. And the same logic holds with the topic first or content first approach, where your Zettel custom is really a view on your notes because some of your notes have a type permanent note and are linked into a topic. So, in this sense, the Zettel custom is a view or an additional view on your note taking system. And finally, here's the action first approach, or I also call it context centric approach, where everything gets organized based on the context in which you will most likely use it next. The strong advocate of this is Tiago Forte with the para method where he says that you should organize for action and when there's new information then you should follow this simple workflow to check is the information I want to store useful for a project? If yes, then store it with the project. If not, then is it useful for one of the areas in my life like finances, family, home? If not, then is it a resource? Is it something that I can reuse later? Maybe a template or something like that. And finally, if none of those, then you place it in the archive. And just as another approach, you can look this up on Link Your Thinking by Nick Milo. A similar folder-based structure is the Access system, where Access stands for Atlas, Calendar, Cards, Extras, Sources, and Spaces. Bottom line is, this is more or less a folder-based approach. There you have different folders for different areas or topics. So for example, your projects, your areas, your resources, and your archives. And then you have individual folders here for different subtopics. I guess the question is, so what? So we've looked at these five different approaches. We talked about how everyone seems to have an opinion. We talked about the ingredients and this idea of us shaping our tools and our tools shaping us. So what? And my experience is, as I mentioned earlier, my preferences evolve and the way I use tools evolve. Back in the days, now over two decades ago, when I first started to use the brain, I took a content first approach. I just created new thoughts. Notes are called thoughts in the brain for everything. And I was very much focused on this link based approach. Over the years, my approach evolved to a topic first approach first, where I created these context notes and I started to use thought types to create a bit more structure. And from the topic first approach, I moved over to a daily note first approach because I found that my daily notes, my diary was a great starting point where I could branch out from into my brain. So the point is the way you structure your notes will evolve over time. And I think that's the right thing for it to happen. Personally, I tried Para, but for me, the folder structure fell apart. I may have had too many projects. I had problems with applications automatically creating folders in different locations, and it had just lots of friction in my experience. So Para didn't work for me. That doesn't mean that Para is not a good approach. I tried Zettelkasten and I really like the ethos of Zettelkasten. I find it very compelling, this idea of having a research topic and then evolving that topic and branching out into subtopics and creating permanent notes with lateral links between notes. I find this really very compelling, but I am not a researcher. I didn't find so many research topics to work on and I found the approach to have a bit too much friction, but maybe I was just not doing it right or didn't give it 
timing off because it was really just a couple of months of trying to make Zettelkasten work for my workflow. So what I plan to do now is I plan to evolve my current daily note first approach into more of a topic first setup in Obsidian. I will keep my daily notes first approach because I find that the daily notes first approach is excellent for my meeting notes and I have lots of meetings about projects and systems that I work on during my day so that I'm planning to keep but overall I'm thinking to move all my other topics my research for example into visual PKM I plan to move it into a topic first setup and I will also give Zettelkasten another try feeding it from my daily note first topic first hybrid system so I'm going to be moving to somewhere I think more to the right hand side of this chart where I'm thinking to create this Zettelkasten and for me the research topics are going to be at first the 12 favorite problems that keep me engaged in work that keep me engaged in visual note taking that keep me going every day that is the summary I wanted to share with you I hope you found this helpful I think this is a good topic to reflect on and to think about where you are today and where you might want to go and I would be very interested in your views do you see any other approaches apart from the five that I listed here and which one do you prefer do you think that one is better than the other and if yes why or do you agree with my view that it's not better just different so I hope you found this discussion helpful and I hope to see you next time thank you